prophet uh, with his rabbi said, I give you the keys. You have the key, right? You can tell me, go there, I'll go to your Oracle Makai. You can help. So you can only help so many times. You can only help so many circles. But you can help. That's the power of a tzaddik. So the power of a tzaddik is not only to help, it's to know who you can help and when you can help. There was a Jew that I knew in Detroit, very fine, very, very fine Jew, who served as a soldier in the Polish Army in the 1920s. And he really hit the one end of a rifle than the other. He was an unlikely soldier, let's put it that way. So he said, I'll tell you, you know, he said how I went to the Polish Army. That I went to the public crying for a brocha not to go to the yeshiva when they drafted the 1920s. There were no exemptions. Everybody had to go to the Polish army. Poland had one of the largest standing armies in Europe. And Poland had a very successful army. They won a war against Russia and they won a war against Lithuania. Consecutive wars, which built up the Polish ego to the point where they felt that they would be able to win a war against Germany. And uh, that's why uh, they behaved with uh, all the arrogance that they did in the 1930s towards Germany. In any event, so Jewish, uh, the yeshiva guys would go to the Huffer Times to get a bracha. Not to, uh, not to have to go to the army. He said, I came to the Huffer Times, the Huffer Times looks at me, he says, look, but there's also a Jewish soldat name. There have to be Jewish soldiers also. And he was drafted. And he was a nurse, a male nurse in the Russian and the Polish army for two years. So he said, all of my life, I want to be white in the world. What do you know? What did he see here? And then he said, he said, well, he said, that's how I was saved when the, when the Germans came. He said, because when the Germans came, the Poles, when the war broke out, the Poles called up all the deserts, so they called him up as well. So he had to go rejoin his old unit, and he was a male nurse, and his unit was captured by the Russians on the Russian front, and they sent the 50,000 Poles to Siberia. And then in 1941, when Russia was attacked, and they became allies with England, so England forced Russia to release all the Polish soldiers. That time Menachem Begin came to Palestine. He was also in the Polish army, and he was in Siberia with all the other Polish prisoners. And they were, England took the Polish prisoners from Siberia to England to uh, allow them to become part of the Polish Legion, which fought under General Andres. England thought they were going to rebuild Poland after the war, and Russia would let them. But in any event, I took all the Polish soldiers, so he got out. When he came already to, uh, when he came to the Western world, he got lost in the Polish army somehow. He disassociated himself, and he ended up eventually. So he said, that's how he lived, because everybody else in his village was destroyed when the Nazis came. But he said, when the Hubbard Chaim told him that, he said, he, like, he had a heart attack. All the time, don't have to be Jewish soldiers, too. But he can't do anything for him. So the, the power of a tzaddik uh, is to know when and where and who. So here the Novi Elisha, he has to do anything. He has to do something for it. He cannot stand idly by. Vayomer Elisha Moheselo. 